Out of the 800 that were not IDF, civilians, okay? Former IDF, doesn't matter, okay? Former IDF? <laughs> A decent chunk of them were also murdered by uh, the, the Israeli Defense Forces. Israel is infinitely more evil than Hamas ever could be. Crazy. So then he starts making up lies. Lying about me, lying about positions. It, it's, it, it's, it's, it's been a couple, a month or okay. two, so I can't remember the, the specific things he posted. These, that, uh, yeah, that no. Sh why would I show it on my stream and then lie about it when everybody can literally watch me doing it on the stream? The point, the issue was that you haven't blacklisted her. That was the point. God, he, he like he's lying, trying to accuse me of lying. People are lying. Song claims the IDF killed a good chunk of October seventh victims. No longer even using the veiled threats. Okay, but the IDF aren't hiding inside of schools and hospitals. Yes, they are. What are you talking about? The IDF headquarters is quite literally. Next to a f***ing mall in Tel Aviv. What the f*** are you talking about? There's a higher combatant density inside of Israel than there is in f***ing Gaza. I'm pretty sure just definitionally that's just not true. Um, if for no other reason, because the Negev is mainly, it's just mostly hugely empty space. But that's the second clip. Oh, f I don't have the uh, copy paste anymore, so... The entire country is a reserve. Did I did I accidentally search for this? Oh, I did. She then she then goes into the other side of the equation. Now notice she talked about direct victims, humanize them, right, on the Israeli side. Young people at a music festival, sexual violence that was unspeakable. Okay, Cringe. that Hamas did, right? Cringe. Now let's hear how she talks about the Palestinians. Now, twelve hundred Israelis were murdered on October seven. Um. 1,200 Israelis total. Uh, I believe around 400 of them were already uh, were IDF, so they were enemy combatants. Out of the 800 that were not IDF, out of the 800 that were not IDF, civilians, okay? Former IDF, doesn't matter, okay? Former IDF? <laughs> oh, what a great one. I'm just, we should call every single Palestinian death from now on jihadists, I guess, if they're Muslims. What an unhinged comment. What an unhinged comment. Oh my god. Okay. Former IDF, doesn't matter. Okay. Not a, not a majority, but a, a decent chunk of them were also murdered by uh, the, the Israeli Defense Forces. Um, I said this before, I hated that Rabani got away with seeming more intelligent and more measured in the conversation that I had because Finkelstein was there. But um, Rabani is also a, a massive, probably anti-Semitic hack for um, who also tried to do the same thing. This is why I asked so many times, how many do you think were killed by the IDF? What percentage? Give a guess. What do you think? It's because this talking point is still pervasive today. Hassan probably thinks half or more were killed by the IDF. That's the talking point. When he says a good chunk, he means like half. So the 800 civilian deaths, he's going to say that like maybe 400 got killed by the IDF. And he's going to cite to that one Heretz article that talks about how on the final day or two of fighting, like I think on October 9th or 10th or whatever, that I think some of the civilians might have been killed like I think like 10 or 12 might have been killed as the IDF was coming back through to try to clear out Hamas because Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and other Palestinian fighters were like holed up basically in kibbutzes and in homes and stuff. Um, and it's, it's possible that some Israeli fire killed some civilians that were being um, that were being fought alongside uh, some of the uh, invaders. I guess not, this has not nothing to do with the Hannibal Directive whatsoever. It is anybody that brings it up in this context is just completely has nothing to do with that. Doesn't matter. Okay. Not a, not a majority, but a, a decent chunk of them were also murdered by uh, the, the Israeli Defense Forces. Okay? Hamas and the Palestinian resistance groups that operated alongside Hamas. The Palestinian resistance groups. The second largest one was Palestinian Islamic Jihad, by the way. So, the Palestinian resistance groups. And criminal elements that also broke through the boundary, the Gaza border and fence. And criminal elements... So it's an effort to downplay um, Hamas as much as possible, or, or at least the Palestinian involvement in the Gaza Strip. So it was resistance fighters and then some criminals, I guess, right? Hamas and criminal elements that also broke through the boundary, the Gaza border fence, were responsible for, were responsible for the majority of the civilian deaths and the majority of the IDF deaths, okay? For sure. Like, that's not, a, that's not an unfair estimation at all, Okay. For sure. Like, the majority elements that also broke through the boundary, the Gaza border fence, were responsible for, were responsible for the majority of the civilian deaths and the majority of the IDF deaths. Okay. This is why I like it. This is why I like to ask somebody, give me like an approximate percentage. Well, I'm not going to nail you down. I'm not going to say like, gosh, be like 17.48. But the problem is like, he has so much wiggle room here to where if you were to confront him on it, 
in a public space, he would say like majority, um, like I think like ninety uh, percent were killed by you know uh, Hamas and the, the invaders. But then like to his audience, they understand is like maybe fifty one percent, maybe fifty two percent, like almost half were probably killed by Israel. Okay, for sure. Like that's not a that's not an unfair estimation at all. Okay. On the other side, since October seven. On the other side, since October 7, Israel has killed more than 40,000 Palestinians. The overwhelming majority of 40,000 Palestinians that Israel has murdered, okay, are women, children, and the elderly. Do you think he'll give any estimate at all, number percentage-wise, of how many might have been um, fighters? Any estimate at all, you think? Think about that. Think about the numbers. Lancet estimations put it at 185,000 once the dust is settled. Right? That's an 185,000 deaths? Okay, chief. Maybe it's 5 million deaths, bro. Who knows? An estimate? That is not what it, the, the actual number is, please. It is the way the Lancet came up with estimate. that estimate is pretty fucking retarded, too. If I, I, the way that they extrapolated that, I have to go back and check. I, just, I headlined this and scammed it, but it looked like the way that they had arrived at that estimate was literally fucking retarded. Um, man, the Lancet has posted some major fucking L's. Uh, they posted that, uh, the Bernie Sanders single health payer analysis too. I think that was posted in the Lancet. I think that was a dog shit fucking article as well. And I think the Lancet posted the, uh, vaccine causes autism shit a long time ago too. <laughs> uh, or that was that nature. I think that was the Lancet, but Jesus. Anyway, 185,000 once the dust is settled, right? That's an estimate. That is not what it, the, the actual number is, please. It is a conservative estimate because Israel hasn't just killed 40,000 Palestinians, they've also destroyed the entirety of the Gaza Strip. Like, the entirety of the Gaza Strip. Okay? Numbers on a board. Civilian versus enemy combatant per capita targeting. Why was the healthcare thing bad? Um, conservative estimate, yeah. That's, that's actually a massive extrapolation. Completely unknown uh, what the actual data is. They just extrapolated that out. The, the Lancet thing for the Bernie Sanders thing was they had a bunch of um, amateur economists or whatever, or some dipshits that didn't know how to do any kind of real data analysis at all, um, came in and they gave an estimation for how much money single-payer healthcare would save in the United States. And I think the way that they arrived at that estimate was they took how much money was spent on administration costs for Social Security. No, no, for, I'm sorry, for Medicare. And they compare that to how much money was spent um, administratively versus how much was spent on healthcare for ordinary private insurance. And I think for Medicare, the, it's like two to 3% is spent on administrative costs. And for ordinary insurance, I think it's like 15 to 20% is spent on administrative costs. And they basically said, well, look, if we had single payer for the entire country, bam, look how much money we'd save. We're wasting like 15 to 20%. It's just a drag on the economy. It's just being wasted on healthcare administration. But the massive, huge, terrible issue with that is that one, the minor point is a lot of Medicare administrative costs are kind of subsumed with Social Security. You're automatically enrolled. They do identity tracking and all that. But two, the huge one was healthcare consumption of old people is massive. Old people consume so much health care. So obviously, a guy who's consuming health care at a massive rate is paying percentage-wise much less for administrative costs than he would for health care treatment because the treatment is going to be so much more expensive, right? Like if you look at somebody like me, 100% or 95% of all the money I've spent in my life on healthcare has been spent on administrative costs because I'm, I'm, I'm not a sick person. I'm young, right? Like, but for an old person, the vast majority of the money that they're spending is going towards really expensive uh, medical treatment. So, yeah. Israel is infinitely more evil than Hamas ever could be. When you just straightforward look at the numbers, Israel has targeted significantly larger percentages of the civilian population and civilian infrastructure than Hamas has. Okay? That is just, an, that's just a fact. You cannot deny that. That is just an abject fact. Okay? They've also done this while having access to the Palestinian... Did you read that study like the original paper? I don't know if we read the whole thing or um, parts of it, but yeah, I think I, I went through it like confidently enough that I feel pretty confident about my assessment there. That is just an abject fact. Okay? Wait, sorry. Hold on. What is he saying? Um, hold on. Um, (sighs) 
Please help me. How is Hamas worse than Israel? Or how is the suffering caused by both sides not equal? It's you never, you would just never, ever, ever measure it in just the civilian casualties. You just never do that. It just doesn't make any sense. You always take into account like motivations and stuff at play here rather than just saying like who killed more. Like if you think about like good guys or bad guys um, in like World War II, you would never think like, well, the Nazis were the bad guys because they killed way more people than, you know, the allies and the U.S. and the allies um, who killed way less people. You would never think about it that way. You just don't ever analyze any conflict like that ever. Um, yeah. The reason why people generally would say Hamas are the bad guys is because Hamas operates in a way where they try to maximize the civilian casualties, period. That means on both sides, their own and on the other side, um, they conduct themselves in ways that they don't even pretend to try to conform to any of the internationally recognized rules of war. Um, and it seems like their goal, although it's hard to know 100%, but it kind of seems like their goal is the total destruction of Israel as a country. Um, and uh, yeah, so the uh, kind of bad, not, not the best, kind of not good. Um, the, um, yeah, Israel seems more reasonable than Hamas, but civilian population and civilian infrastructure than Hamas has. Okay. That is just an, that's just a fact. You cannot deny that. That is just an abject fact. Okay. Wait, what is, I'm sorry. I keep missing. They've also done that. Okay. Numbers on a board, civilian versus enemy combatant per capita targeting. Israel is infinitely more evil than Hamas ever could. Civilian versus enemy per capita targeting. That I don't think he's right there at all. You just have to speak in absolute numbers. I, I think he's just adding these words on because he's um, because he saw it in Abby's posts maybe on Twitter, but I don't know why he's... B. When you just straightforward look at the numbers, Israel has targeted significantly larger percentages of the civilian population and civilian infrastructure than Hamas has. Okay? That is just, an, that's just a fact. Hamas you can't. cannot deny that. That is just an abject fact. Okay? To be clear, I don't actually think that's an abject fact. I don't know. What, I don't know where he gets that from. Uh, Israel has missile interception systems or rocket interception systems, and Hamas doesn't. That's why, like Israel's infrastructure survives, not because Hamas doesn't target it, but because Israel intercepts it. But they've also done this while having access to the Palestinian civilian registry, as in they know where every Palestinian is. They have twenty-four-seven round-the-clock surveillance. These are things that the Palestinian resistance groups did not have in terms of their targeting capabilities. They also did not have an air force. They did not. That's a lie. That's a fucking lie. Um, when the invaders went to the kibbutzes, they knew that they were civilians there. They had the layouts ready for these kibbutzes. Um, you could literally stand and see where um, in uh, Kfar Aza, I think, you can see where like the um, like Hamas would stand on top of a garage or on top of like uh, like the armory where the weapons are stored, and they would just shoot people coming out of their homes or shoot people that are on their way to try to like gear up. Um, like, like you can see the bullet holes, you can see everything. Like it wasn't just random. They weren't like, oh shit, like oh no, we just happened to come across this kibbutz. I can't believe that. Like they knew where to go. They had this like pretty well planned out. Have these these offensive weapons capabilities in general, right? And now there's a polio outbreak in Gaza. I mean, it's a fresh hell. It is a genocide, right? She then that polio outbreak too. Damn, there's all sorts of shit going on down there. Nickel Pickle, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. Okay, and then what was the second clip? No longer even using the veiled threats. Okay? But I aren't hiding inside of schools and hospitals. Yes, they are. What are, are you talking about? Uh, yeah, we went to Starat as a city, and then we went to uh, Kafar Asa, I think. It was one of the ones about the idf headquarters is quite literally next to a fucking mall in tel aviv the fuck are you talking about i don't know what that has to do with anything he's i think he's talking about the place with the helicopter landing pad i think we saw this a lot helicopter idf landing pad tel aviv fuck what's the name of the building i'm thinking of it's got like two big things on both sides of it okay Yovel, there's a meme Okay, Yovel, there's a meme that goes online that says the IDF uses human shields as well. By oh, this is the when we went, we went to one of the uh, protests. This was funny watching this protest in person. I'll go over this when we go over everything. Um, the, the media report said that the cops were like antagonizing protesters with their horses and with mace for no reason. But if you were there at the protest, the protesters all sit and they try to get in front of the horses so that they can't move so that they can like intentionally <laughs> basically bait out the cops to try to attack them. Linking civilian infrastructure with military, right? And the argument they say is that this building over here, the command center, is uh, yeah, that's... next to a shopping center, right? It's too close to a shopping center. That's the command center, right? Yeah. This is the shopping center. Look how much is in between these two buildings. There's like a road, a fucking road that goes underneath, then another road, and then some trees. Look at that. It's, 
I mean, is it close? Is it not close? That really doesn't matter. But be, the, the thing is, is that, um, oh, hey, look, it's me. Um, the thing is, is that if you, um, if, the reason why you use human shields, the reason why you co-locate military and civilian objectives is because you expect to gain some sort of advantage from it. Israel doesn't gain any advantage from it because Hamas kills civilians. So it's almost definitionally impossible for Israel to use human shields because that wouldn't protect them from being attacked. <laughs> it, it, like it doesn't, it almost definitionally like doesn't even work because they, they, they know that, right? You're never thinking as an Israeli soldier like, fuck, if I just run into this hospital, there's no way Hamas is going to attack me here. It doesn't make any sense. The fuck are you talking about? There's a higher combatant density inside of Israel than there is in fucking Gaza. The entire country is a reservist. They've all served in the military. Far more people inside of Israel have served in the IDF per capita than people inside of Gaza. Have. This should be auto ban. Fuck. I want to say really, really, really bad things that would get me banned from every single platform for him making this comment. Um, the fact that he will never talk about how many militants there are in the Palestinian death tolls, he considers, so he wants every single Jewish person in Israel should be killed, right? Hassan is advocating for the rape and murder of every single Jew inside Israel, because all of them are former IDF, and I guess all of them are fair targets, because you have to, because it's mandatory conscription or whatever. But that's fine. Hassan seems like the kind of guy who would support, like, mass rape and murder and then cover up for it constantly. Um, it's such an unhinged, this is such an unhinged statement to make. This is also why, by the way, this is why Jews or Israelis never, ever, ever, ever trust these types of people when they say, oh, we're just looking out for Palestinians and we're not anti-Jew, we're just anti-Zionists. And by anti-Zionists, we just mean the most far-right ones. They never believe you and they never will believe you. And if you, if I was Jewish, I wouldn't believe you. If I was Jewish, I would think the whole f***ing world is anti-Semitic. When people like this get coverage by Jeff Bezos and Amazon to make the in most insane f***ing statements on Twitch and have free reign of that platform and all the young minds there and all the other streamers there who are too cucked out to ever oppose them, this is an unhinged fucking statement. This is an unhinged statement. All served in the military. Far more people inside of Israel have served in the IDF per capita than people inside of Gaza have served in any of the armed wings of Hamas or Palestinian Islamic Jihad or any other armed factions. So, no, you're absolutely wrong on this. There is no way to argue around this point. Okay? The notion that, like, Israel must target schools and hospitals because, the idea, because Hamas is hiding there is bullshit anyway. One of the largest battles that occurred was that two-week siege in, uh, on Al-Shifa, by the way. But maybe it just took the idea of two weeks to blow up all the civilians. Who knows? And all the people they captured that they said were soldiers, um, maybe, uh, you know, maybe that's, maybe it was all a meme. Maybe they're, none of them are soldiers. And they would probably say Israel lies about it anyway. They just wanted more hostages and rape victims, I guess. It's not correct. It's completely incorrect. That's precisely the reason why they keep saying there's a command and control center under this hospital, so we have to blow it up. And then there's no command and control center. So then they go, oh, the command and control center actually moves to the there other. There were huge tunnels that were found under the Al-Shifa hospital, and there were tunnels that seemed to be actively maintained with, uh, with wiring and stuff running underneath them. There was also a big one found underneath an UNRWA building that people operated directly out of, but okay. Other hospital, we gotta blow it up. Then there's no command and control center. So what are we talking about? These are outdated lies that have been proven to be lies over and over again. genuinely curious didn't they find tunnels and stuff in hospitals they did but a tunnel he's gonna say oh shit never mind fuck now i know what he's gonna say there are two ways to get around this the first way is to say well israel built them that's why they know they're there and then the second way to get around it uh is to say that the tunnels are just there for safety reasons and they're not actually used by militants there's no proof of that but we'll see I'm curious didn't they find tunnels and stuff in hospitals they did but a tunnel system does not mean that it's an operational command and control center and as a matter of fact that's precisely what they found under uh, the, the major hospital in Gaza that they claimed had a command and control center. Okay. I mean, they did find things under here, but these people expected to see like a whole ass fucking NASA computer room and they were upset when there were only like laptops and guns, but okay. Half of the tunnel system was already built with, uh, with Israel's supervision. There you go. Because hospitals do have tunnel systems under them, of course. But regardless... I thought yeah. they actually had their command centers and hospitals. Ha Hassan wanted to see videos of like the fucking bat cave. Yeah. But regardless, I thought they actually had their command centers and hospitals and schools. Yeah, that's a lie, brother. That's just a lie. 
by the way, Al Shifa uh, is a known like area that terrorists operate out of. There's literally Amnesty International reports and everything out of it. Nobody, nobody actually denies this. This is like a well-known thing. Nobody denies this. You've got video footage on the day of October seventh of hostages being taken back to this hospital, past two others or, or three or four others, but they're, they're driving past the hospitals to go to Al Shifa. And Amnesty International has published reports criticizing, you know, interrogation of prisoners, Al Shifa hospital, uh, like like plenty of people. Um, this is just, this just isn't even like um it's not even a, it's not even a seriously contested it's not even a, nobody nobody actually denies this <laughs> policy is tortured summarily killed by hamas forces during 2014 conflict control f shifa um <clears throat> so while carrying out unlawful killings others subjected by hamas for torture, torture including <clears throat> severe beatings with truncheons gun butts hoses and wire or held in stress positions or interrogated and tortured otherwise ill-treated in a discussed uh, in a disused outpatients clinic within the grounds of gaza city's main al shiva hospital and there's like there's a full there's like a full um there's like a full fucking uh report i think just on uh, al shiva i think from amnesty international this is even in 2009 they were still talking they were already talking about maybe Jamal Al-Gandur, uh, in his mid-50s, was shot dead in his bed in Al-Shifa Hospital about 4 p.m. on the 20th of December by unmasked gunmen wearing plain clothes in front of relatives and other witnesses. Also present were uniformed members of Hamas security forces who took no action to prevent the killing or to apprehend the perpetrators. But, but like, this is, nobody even denies this. It's boring even looking it up. Nobody denies this. Like, it's insane how much, like, free propaganda the West does when Hamas themselves don't even deny this. It's so crazy. <laughs> You show chatter all the evidence of the idea of using hospitals in Gaza as military bases. Yeah, they they set up shop inside of the hospitals. Israeli military is using the Nur Qabi dialysis hospital in the Jabalia refugee camp as a military base and operational center amid the ongoing invasion. This is the second hospital that they hide behind, following the Tika hospital in Netzarim. Israel, the idea it doesn't make any sense. You can't say that the IDF can't hide behind hospitals. Hamas likes civilian deaths. They, they, there's no hiding from them in a hospital. It doesn't make any sense to say that. It's always projection. Okay. It's always projection. Everything that Israel says Hamas is doing, they do tenfold. And nobody fucking cares. No longer even... <sighs> I don't care. Why doesn't Vosh get shut on for his dog shit Hamas propaganda here? He has big viewership nowadays and says stuff is unhinged or more than Hassan, but almost never gets brought up. I think Vosh tries to be a bit more NATO friendly when it comes to Israel, Palestine, and Ukraine, Russia. He still says some tough stuff, but he's also Hassan is like pigeonholed, or um, Vosh is like pigeonholed completely into like his own little world right now. So I don't, I don't know. We just don't come across this shit as much. Vosh is not moderate on it at all on Israel, Palestine. But so far, everything I've seen is correct. There was def some guy with Hamas and Hezbollah signs, like a soldier. Phoenix. Okay, I don't give a shit, man. If you support Hamas or Hezbollah, you're objectively more morally in the right than defending Israel. Like, if you take this as like an oppositional, like us or them, whatever, Israel right now is the one committing a genocide. Hamas and Hezbollah aren't. So if you want to engage in that level of more. Didn't he start this off a lot more hinged? What changed? Or is he trying to grift for more viewership? Is he changed his opinions or Vosh is getting his subscribers back? Oh, okay. Moral equivocacy, okay? Uh, Joe Biden saying he supports Israel's right to defend itself is implicitly more morally harmful than somebody running around uh, a protest saying, with saying, like, Hamas is coming or whatever. Like, come on. Have some perspective here. His Ukraine stuff is more sane? Jewish billionaires based. Fuck yourself to death, you genocidal freak. Israel already killed all of its own fucking citizens. Fuck this monster. Fuck this bitch. Bro, she is a traitor. Fuck her, fuck her. Oh, fuck her. We need a ceasefire, but also Israel can kill as many children as possible. I'm voting PS on a wing state. In a <laughs> wing state. Swing state. Fuck Holocaust. Harris. Zionist propaganda. Fucking snake. Centrist motherfuckers. Fleeing from who you ghoul. Fuck this bitch. Fuck you, Kamal. Don't forget to do the McAfee check. Oh. Let me be clear. Oh, one of the leading political Andes on Twitch. I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself. And I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend 
defend itself because the people of Israel must never again face the horror that a terrorist organization called Hamas caused on October 7. Wow. Thank you. I have no idea why she started to get so into politics. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, another one. What's this? Here's what I need you to stop wasting your time on. Stop saying, so you think Trump will be better. Or these people think Trump will be better. Stop wasting your time on that. Stop wasting your time on, yeah, but Kamala called for a ceasefire. Like, let's just cut the bullshit, basically. Let's cut the bullshit. When it comes to Palestine, Kamala has shown thus far that she will not be different. And in fact, her talking about like the most lethal army in the world, like this, this, this girl is, it, it, it might just, it might be worse. Most lethal army so, here's in the I, world was about the U.S. Army. We're not participating in military uh, conflict with Palestine or the Gaza Strip, but okay. without preaching for what you actually think? Do you know who else does this for? Uh, it's, never mind. Frickly? Who does it? Alex Stein. Oh, yeah, exactly. And I owe Alex a big apology because I had him on my show not that long. Oh, he's going to say because I deserved it because of things that happen in the future. Okay, sorry. I and his black friend, are, and he's wearing a Redskins shirt, are surprised at the woke. And then the woke guy gets a phone call from Rachel Levine and... Uh, okay. Really? Rachel Levine? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, a guy in the dog, the guy in the military. Like Low-hanging fruit. Good lord. Yeah, it well, is. exactly. That's why everyone's roasting it. So anyway, to get to get away from all that, the point is, doing these mockumentaries where it's Borat style insulting to the woke and the left without preaching for what you actually think. You know who else does this perfectly? Who does it? Alex Stein. Oh yeah, exactly. And I owe Alex a big apology because I had him on my show not that long ago, and I'm like, dude, why'd you come so hard for Destiny? And then, you know, the assassination happened. And then Destiny, Destiny came back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's God, Andrew's fuck. Up. I need, um, I wish I could edit videos. Maybe I should learn this. Like, that, cutting that clip and then afterwards being like, oh, you know who does this really well? Alex Stein. And then just having video after video after video of him, like, sexually harassing AOC and, like, all this shit. It would just be such a great video to make. Destination, it yeah. sounds. Yeah, yeah I was, I was kind of spun out over that when he when he approached destiny on stage at that minds event yeah i was, I was very upset steve not was. very upset i was like dude come on what did he do like uh, destiny was on stage alex just crashed the stage and started screaming at him and he, and he was asking all these questions destiny couldn't even respond and i'm like what are you doing but the argument then is if, if people, alex just explained to my show because oh, yeah. if alex real, hadn't real, done real, that steven uh, might not have spun out yeah, yeah. real real not quick uh, what uh kamala harris is going to be speaking at Ooh. 10 eastern then Mm, interesting. Oh. They were reporting nine this morning. It was right, right, that's nine central. They pushed her to NBC ten? NBC said no, nine no, no, no. this morning, but I could... You know. Because NBC5 Chicago says uh, 9 p.m. hour. We could keep the show going a little longer, but you know they're going to oh. start late. Destiny had okay, a kind of well. He put his feet up. The salad didn't really so care what Alex was saying. Do you yeah. think it's... So Destiny didn't care. He put, his hand, he put his feet up on the table, didn't really care. He did care. because He you, played it off, I guess. Yeah, but what are you supposed to do? Yeah, but again, get mad. And fight. But it, it's also like yeah. it's really effed up that you're yeah, on central. stage. Someone crashes and give it a mic. It's, it's you know it's like what the hell? Yeah, no one pulled him off. Yeah, stopped him. But I, so I'm not familiar. He was basically it was it was not a bit. He was actually just going after him. Went, yeah, so in his Alex way, he had a smile on his face. He wasn't oh, like okay. you know going to like go to hurt him. Yeah, but it was still like what are you doing? It was here? very off. Yeah, it was very off. Where, where was it? The mind's event in Austin oh, okay. at the Vulcan, and, and Alex was like your wife, and, and Steve was like oh my god again. This is all you people, and then he kind of lumped in this weird conservative people thing, and it's like just reinforcing his stereotype of crazy people on the right, which is not good for his brain and people. Wasn't this whole group of people just defending Alex Stein though as being like a good dude? How like what do you mean like <laughs> on the left? So like I didn't I didn't personally. I don't know, man. I'm not much of a, of a social jammer. I think honesty and kindness is the better path, but there is a place for, for Alex's style yes, of comedy yeah. for sure. No, and Alex explained it on my show and made a lot of sense. Cool. Yeah. What yeah. was the explanation? Wait, I want to hear this so much. What? But I do think, Ian, you often take this approach where you can, can, can you consistently give the benefit of the doubt and try to empathize with evil people. Mm. Yeah. You think you Destiny's turn evil? Them to the light. I'm like, uh, Obi-Wan. You think Destiny's evil? I'm not talking about Destiny. Okay. I mean, I think Destiny's a bad guy for sure. Okay. Um, Thanks. You know, if we get into the, the depth of his being, maybe we come to the conclusion that he's evil. We have to have a conversation about it. But I just mean, Ian often says things like pardon Hillary Clinton. You know what I mean? But that's kind of like a utilitarian hostage. Hillary Clinton doesn't need a pardon because she's not criminally charged with anything, Tim. Negotiation type of thing. Like, pardon everyone. Let it over with and move forward. That's insane. 
no, no. I want the Michael's lawfare to end, and I feel like if you can end it across the aisle you all at once. It. You can end it right Mike, Michael is uh, uh, governors for Gitmo. Yes. Think about the Sith. If you if you strike one down, another one just pops up somewhere else in the universe. So, so you got to build another lamppost. So you got to turn hands. them to the light. That's the yeah. way to oh, defeat you're them. Gonna, you're going to turn Hillary Clinton to the light? Yeah. A little bit of kumbaya goes a long way. That's the way. So, man. so anyway, to the point of destiny. In, in many of these circumstances, you have these. As I was explaining with the Krasensteins, I'm triggered. I know, I know. I'm not <laughs> as, as I explained with the Krasensteins, I tell you nothing. You've got these individuals know they're lying. I, I, I destiny knows he's lying. I have about about most of his positions. What a loser, dude. This guy gets fact-checked so fucking hard. His fucking neck snaps. Like, anytime I confront him, like, when he was on the show, he's like, well, are there, like, oh, 10, how, how many thousands of people did he say every year we're getting, like, sex reassignment surgery? He's like, I don't know, let's look this up. He's like, oh, shit. What did he say about Ahmed Arbery? Marbury? I don't know what the fuck this guy's name was. The black dude that got lynched by the three crazy white dudes? He's like, oh, he was jogging 22 miles away from his home. He wasn't at all. Like, the 50-state landslide? Like, uh, why am I even engaging with this? I, Tim is a known liar. He obviously lies about almost everything. Like, we can verifiably fact check. We watched the, the Olympic shit where he just, he didn't even look up any, he had no idea what the fuck he was talking about before he was ready to to, to give us his huge opinion on the on the trans boxer. Like, uh, there, he, he that was Mount. No, no, no. This was on. This Tim Pool did this too. When I was on a show and we were arguing that one time I was there. I think it might have been the last time I was there. And he brought up some trans show. I was like, let's look at how many kids does this actually affect. Uh, he, he did. He had the same issue. He, he tried baiting me. To, so I, we were talking on the show about why someone asked me if I'd have him on the show after he gloated over the death of Corey Compatore. Sure. Gloat. And I said no because we anybody who gloats. Any, anybody who intentionally breaks the rules of these social media platforms by glorifying, gloating, or encouraging violence, harm, and death would just get us banned. I, I, Destiny, I could not wrap my head around that. Destiny coming on the show would be an insta ban for us. So it's not a question of. I said, that, what? It, this is such a like. That's a lie. Like he just told a lie right there. I, you understand? I'm streaming on YouTube right now, and I've been posting on YouTube the entire time, and I still have my YouTube channel throughout everything. Like who? And I made these comments, and I was talking on YouTube. Like where? What? What, what is the basis for this? I don't need personal beef. It's just, if we brought him on the show so we could articulate his position on why he wanted to glorify the death of someone who was murdered by a psychopath, YouTube would just delete the episode. It's crazy. So then he starts making up lies, lying about me, lying about my positions. It, it's, it, it's, it's, it's been a couple, a month or okay. two, so I can't remember the specific things he posted. But uh, one example I can give you is, he says, oh yeah, well Tim had Laura Loomer on, and Laura Loomer called for the death penalty, and I was like, and we pulled that show off the air instantly, but he doesn't tell his audience that. No, we all saw that it got pulled off instantly, but the issue is you haven't blacklisted Laura Loomer, right? I've never heard him say Laura's not a lot of the show. I think that Catwoman even asked Tim is Laura permanently blacklisted from show? And she's not. Even though Laura made that comment on your show. And I would never make a comment like that on another person's show. I don't want anybody who's fucking shit banned, obviously. He says, why is Tim Pool having Laura Loomer who says this? And then he does No, I asked, why isn't she blacklisted? Doesn't clarify that actually we told her not to say those things. Don't glorify death, even in that circumstance. And we pulled the show because we don't, we, we, we say no to that. You might not have known that the show got pulled. He's done, of course he does. And it doesn't matter to him anyway. When he was doing that episode. He, he played the clip that after. literally showed the episode getting pulled down. It was part of the commentary saying, why did Tim pull the episode? He's lying. These that, uh, yeah, that no sh why would I show it on my stream and then lie about it when everybody can literally watch me doing it on the f stream? The point, the issue is that you haven't blacklisted her. That was the point. God, he, he like he's lying, trying to accuse me of lying. People are lying. You don't spend your life on the internet reading all of the context and then going, oops, I made a mistake again. Oops, I made a mistake again. This is what I'm saying about David Pakman. The example I always give is when he played a clip of Ted Cruz on Meet the Press and Ted, they asked Ted Cruz, do you really believe that Ukraine interfered in the 2016 election to help Hillary Clinton win? And Ted Cruz responds to the effect that is that a thing? Did I miss that conspiracy? Did Ukraine interfere in our elections? Is that something we're supposed to think now if we're conservative? Of the New York Times reported it. And then you hear a producer start laughing. And then David Pakman starts laughing and says, this, something in the effect of like, wow, how stupid is he to believe this? There's no way David Pakman sourced the Meet the Press clip in, and did not see Politico and the New York Times reporting it as fact. He had to intentionally not read those stories. So when I see him do something like that, I'm like, what? Because I've known Pac-Man for like 12 years or, or we're going on. Yeah, I can't remember. 2008, I've been watching this. Uh, I met, met him during like the Occupy okay. era. Like, I don't know. I remember when he had 700 subscribers on YouTube. I so like, I, 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 I've, a suit. it's not like I'm friends with him or anything. I've known him for a long time. We've talked periodically. We've been at different events. And so I'm like, there's no way when you Google search this Ukrainian thing and Politico pops up and it says, and I'm going to pull it up because I always do. Ukraine, uh, Politico, uh, Ukraine. It's, it's, it's saved in this computer because of how often I pull this up. <laughs> Ukrainian efforts to sabotage Trump backfire. It's insane how often I pull this up. It's, it's, it's saved in this computer because of how often I pull this up. <laughs> or it's saved because of how often I pull What is this U from political? Ukrainian efforts, Ukrainian efforts to, to sabotage Trump backfire. Is this going to be about like public statements made by public leaders? Or is this going to be about like a crazy subversive plot like he was implying earlier? Sabotage Trump backfire. January Donald Trump was the only presidential candidate whose campaign was boosted by officials of a former Soviet bloc country. Uh, Ukrainian government officials tried to help Hillary Clinton undermine Trump by publicly questioning his fitness for office. They also disseminated documents implicating a top Trump aide in corruption and suggested they were investigating the matter only to back away after the election. And they helped Clinton's allies research damaging information on Trump and his advisors, a political investigation found. Oh, yeah, there might be a little bit more substance to this.
January 11, 2017, Donald Trump wasn't the only presidential candidate whose campaign was boosted by officials from a former, former Soviet bloc. This, this is Ken Del- uh, Kenneth P. Vogel and David Stern who reported this. This, this report was massive. And Ted Cruz was like, I saw the news. And then he runs a clip mocking Ted Cruz. And I'm like, he's, he's intentionally lying. Anybody who reads the news for a living, saw this story, <laughs> knew that Ukraine did this. Paul Manafort went to prison over it. It was... Well, Paul Manafort went to prison because he was um, doing a ton of work, foreign work, and he wasn't reporting any of the income to the State Department, which is a big no-no. Um, Ukrainian efforts. I wonder what this story says. Ukrainian efforts to sabotage Trump backfire Politico. Oh, fuck. This is a long-ass article. Hold on. Let me read and skim. Ukrainian American operative who was consulting with the Democratic National Committee met with top officials in the Ukrainian embassy in Washington in order to, uh, in an effort to expose ties between Trump, top campaign aide Paul Manafort, and Russia, according to people direct knowledge of the situation. Um, well, was this in conjunction with the Democratic Party, or was this ha- was this because of? Um, was this because of the uh, Mueller investigation? Because it said the Ukrainian efforts had an impact in the race, helping to force Manafort's resignation and advancing the narrative that Trump's campaign was deeply connected to Ukraine's foe to the East Russia. Why didn't they say what Manafort resigned for? (laughs) Okay. But they were far less concerted or centrally directed than Russia's alleged hacking and dissemination of democratic emails, which was personally directed by... Um, Russian President Vladimir Putin, such top-down effort by Ukraine. Long-time observers, do you think? Uh, do you think that? Do you think Tim's ever read this part? Russia's effort was personally directed by Russian President Vladimir Putin, involved the country's military and foreign intelligence services, according to U.S. intelligence officials. They reportedly briefed Trump last week on the possibility that Russian operatives might have compromising information on the president-elect, and at a Senate hearing last week, at the backing, or, I'm sorry, the hacking. Uh, National, or I'm sorry, Director of National Intelligence James Clapper said, I don't think we've ever encountered a more aggressive or direct campaign in any front election process than we've seen in this case. Do you think he mentions that at all? Intentionally lying. Anybody who reads the news for a living saw this story, <laughs> knew that Ukraine did this. Paul Manafort went to prison over it. It was huge news. And he pretends like he doesn't know. These people are lying because that's why I show the graph of the Krasn scenes. And I gave him a 200 IQ because I'm nice when, he's, when his, IQ, his, his IQ is either very high and he's completely dishonest or he's really stupid and genuinely believes what he's saying. But I don't believe for a second that somebody who reads the news all day is, is just. He's talking about me or the Krasnstein guys? Like, it would be like imagine someone stretched a, 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 Swiss, a, a sheet of 20 inch thick Swiss cheese over the Grand Canyon and they're covering their eyes and spinning across it and dancing and missing every single hole and falling to their death. Did you ever see when Jesse Lee Peterson, praise be unto him, <laughs> had Pacman on his show kicked him off? No, no he kicked him off. Oh, oh David Pacman. He's like, uh, you're. Long time observers suggest um, there's little evidence of such a top down ever by Ukraine. Long time observers suggest the rampant corruption, factionalism, and economic struggles plaguing the country, not to mention its ongoing struggle with Russia, would render it unable to pull off an ambitious covert interference campaign in another country's election. And President Petro Poroshenko's administration, along with the Ukrainian embassy in Washington, insists that Ukraine stayed, ne- stayed neutral in the race. Yet, political investigation found evidence of Ukrainian government involvement in the race um, that appears to strain diplomatic protocol dictating that governments refrain from engaging in one another's elections. Russia's meddling sparked outrage. American body power, like U.S. intelligence, blah, 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 blah. okay, let me scam for anything hold on <laughs> so signing a fifty thousand dollar a month contract to a, with a well-connected gop linked washington lobbying firm to set up meetings with u.s government officials during the u.s ukrainian relations COVID, you may have been advising, probably backed out of European Union, packed, like, you know, instead, you know, COVID, you know, multiplayer. Okay, so a lot of this has to do with the Manafort stuff. Okay, I don't have time to dig into all this. You're, you're not, you didn't come here to tell the truth. You're a liar and you're one of the children of the lie. Thank you, thank you for your time. Goodbye. Go find, find the clip. It's hilarious. Jesse Lee Peterson kicks oh, off. He's smart. Beckman. What were they talking about at the time? He goes, is having a tr- military pay for transgender. Who is the, why is that girl on the show all the time now? Is she like a regular or is she like a co-host now or? Surgery's progress. And David was just kind of like, well, Jesse, you're for like less spending, less money in, on healthcare. He goes, okay, thank you. Like, like, he's you're, like you're, kind of dodging, giving a yeah, direct yeah. answer to the question. Uh, 
I can't find it in the immediate. I can only find the hour long. The reason frames. I well, go, it'll be at the very end. You could just, it's. I'm, I'm telling you, like you'll see where he kicks him off. It's not hard to find. The reason I give these people benefits. It's really worth a lot. Crown are 200 IQ, 100 each. Actually, I'm telling you for the audience. It doesn't, it doesn't come up when I search. I'll find it. I'll find yeah. it. The reason I'll give people benefit of the doubt often is because I'm like, all right. It depends on the person though. Yeah, it does. And the situation in the. If you want to dig into this, you should watch some key Senate hearings on the topic. Uh, I imagine when we read the whole uh, Mueller thing, we'll probably dive into this. She has her own show, I think, on the Tim Pool Network. Gotcha. Oh, shit. Judge rules Brianna Taylor's boyfriend caused her death, throws out major charges against ex-Louisville officers. Throwing out major felony charges against two former Louisville officers accused of falsifying a warrant. Oh, actually, if I, um, if I, I, if I, I, would, I don't have time. I don't want to dig into this whole case. I could see this being a fair thing, though. If, um, like, if it was the case that, um, if it was the case that, like, seven officers show up and, like, one or two of them faked the warrant and you've got two or three other officers that are just there and they think it's a legit warrant, it gets served, the door's knocked down, and then they're part of, like, the shootout. Like, I could understand, like, the other officers that weren't involved in faking any warrant or, like, technically being involved in any misconduct of their own, like, wouldn't necessarily be um, charged with anything. That makes sense, I think. But 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 I, I don't know all the details around this, so I don't know if this is unhinged or not. But this is saying that... Um, federal charges against former Louisville Police Detective Joshua James and former Sergeant Kyle Meany... Uh, were announced by U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland in 2022 during her high proposal. Uh, Garland accused Chains and Meany, who were not present at the raid, of knowing they had falsified part of the warrant and put it in. Which is ruling, there's no direct link between the warrantless entry and Taylor's death. Simpson's ruling effectively uh, reduced the civil rights violation charges against Chains and Meany, which had carried a maximum of life in prison to misdemeanors. Oh, I see. Hmm. Okay, so it sounds like the people who had faked the warrant were being charged with murder, but they weren't at the, um, but they weren't at the actual raid. Huh. Hmm. <laughs> What is this? 